you might say dependence injection, that's nothing new. And you are right, because the Angular team did quite a lot uh, inside the framework. We already had several talks about that. Um, dependency injection is kind of stable, and that's a good thing. They did, though, with the standalone APIs, at least a renaming. That means uh, instead of the module injectors, we now have um, environment injectors. And uh, it's a quite good thing, as mentioned, that dependence injection is stable because then we can rely on those features and do not need to migrate anything or to refactor anything. Um, in my uh, consulting business, I recognize that people are using, uh, of course, a lot of dependency injection in the Angular applications, uh, but rarely um, they really uh, use advanced patterns, and often people are not using advanced patterns because they simply don't know um, what the dependency injection system is actually capable of. Uh, and second thing, um, from the Angular team, Alex Rickabo gave a really nice presentation at the ng-conf about directives. And so I will combine both topics and give you uh, a quick of an overview how we can use dependency injection, um, which maybe alternative configurations you can take, not only use factory and so on, but also on how to use the injector nodes for your uh, applications, and also how uh, directives play into that uh, direction can help you with that. Uh, first of all, we have next to the um, uh, main content here a sidebar with uh, currently displayed two links, home and booking. So in our typical flight application, this time the sidebar is configurable. It's a configurable uh, generic sidebar implementation, so I put it into a simple library. Um, you can really pass in values what is displayed currently. Also, that is maybe nothing special, but let's look into this. Uh, first of all, I have a navigation menu component. It uses already the modern APIs, and because it is using the modern APIs, is the screen size fine also in the back row, so should I increase it a little bit? Good? Yeah, fine. Um, we see here a standalone component with an inline template. You're not forced to do that, but it's, it's quite nice uh, for this simple application. And it iterates over a UI state and shows some uh, navigation items. Question is, where do the navigation items come from? For that, we are using an inject method here, a custom inject method. You could also use the normal one, but I just created a custom one. If you use a custom inject method, please try to name it that way, inject something, because then you know you need to call it from an injection context. And now by looking into that, we have a simple dependency injection provider file, let's call it that way, and in there, uh, you will find an injection token. Why an injection token and not a service class? Because sometimes it's that simple. It's not only that simple, it's that simple <laughs> that you can really manage your state, maybe just with an injection token that is a signal today, and you can set that signal. So if you n just need that, why implement more, right? Just a signal available as a token. The token type this time is injection token of type writable signal string array. And the string array is basically what we will see then in the sidebar because the generic component knows on how to deal with that. Um, the injection token provides a default state. The default state is in this case opinionated. Uh, what does this mean? It lives in my library here. It lives in the library. That means everyone that is using the navigation sidebar component in any of our applications will receive per default that state with home and booking, no matter if the application can deal with that, but that's the, the pre-configuration. Um, so that means that is, that is actually the state that we are seeing here. Now let's assume my application doesn't like that state and needs to use another one, then it's a standalone application already, we can go into the app configuration and say provide navigation state and here I can pass in a new state with, for example, home and check in. Let's save that. And that's basically what we are receiving right now, a check in uh, sidebar link, no booking anymore, and it leads to a different 
um, main content because the router can deal with that. Um, so basically that's one of the things we can have a default configuration provided in root and then each and every application can override that behavior um, inside the application and maybe we could even add some features that each and every lazy loaded module can bring in new navigation links then we do not only have um, configurable routes that are added during runtime but also configurable navigation items. And now let me show you something else. I would like to use the very same uh, navigation component inside one of my feature components, so the flight booking component this time. Here I want to add, it's already imported here, UI navigation menu is the name of the component, and here I want to add the tag, and I add also a class name, self-closing tags, I mean, well also supported, so all the new stuff present here. And the class is nav standalone, just a different styling so that it is not only uh, properly styled in the sidebar but also in the navigation content. Yeah, then I need another link. Give me a second. I need booking again. Okay, now I have my booking link and you can see how uh, now a menu um, that is displayed over there. And it shows a luggage item. Why does it show a luggage item? Because if I now go to my booking component, you can see here I used a, already a local provider. The local provider here um, brings in an, an, an own state that shows already how dependence injection works because I have a node, my own node, or not my own node, my own node would be the UI navigation menu component itself. But the parent component that is using the component in the template now defines a provider. If, would leave, if I would leave that away, it would show, of course, the very same state as the sidebar component. So you can already see it bubbles up. The request on how to get a specific token goes a few steps higher, so from a flight booking component to my app component, then maybe if there's a lazy, lazy loading scope, you could have an environment injector of lazy loaded routes, for example, and then you have the app scope, then you have the platform scope, that we, uh, so the app scope is the root scope, um, then we have the uh, platform scope that you typically don't deal directly with, the framework uh, has some tokens in there, and then the final node is the one we do not really like that much, it's the null injector node, that's the one that is throwing the errors if no token is found that you have not marked as optional. Um, so nice thing, uh, we already saw a different state is possible, um, but what would be the case if I just repeated this? Yeah, I just add the very same component a second time, and of course both are now showing luggage. Not that good, right? How can we tackle, tackle that? We have one and the same UI component, we have, of course, a provider and a parent component. Anyone, does anyone have a, has an idea how we could tackle that? How could, could we have different state for those two components? Directive. Directive, perfect, perfect. Because another option, of course, would be would we could change the signature of the UI component to allow to pass in a configuration. That would be possible technically, but then we need somehow uh, to have a fallback, either use uh, binding if available or use provider. Directive is a very good approach, so we can use it here uh, by using a nav items directive, and this nav items directive can now receive uh, what else is possible here in the routing boarding, for example. That's a bracket too much. Yeah, that's fine. And now I go back to my uh, booking application. Now you can see boarding here, right? So um, now we have the, the final state with the directive. Uh, good point. So let's look into that. How is that implemented? And then I'm closing my talk because the time is over. Um, where is my library? Here it is. I have a directive here. What is this directive doing? Again, some nice no, uh, new APIs. It injects the current state. Which state is the current state? It's a local state that I provided here. That's now hard coded in its just test. But the test is immediately overwritten um, 
as soon as the input binding is available. So the input binding brings me in a new state and this is exactly the state that I passed in here. So through input binding, nav items is on one hand binding um, that the child component, in this case not the component, the directive can use because you know a directive is nothing more than a component without a template. Um, and basically we pass in the input, the input is used inside an effect and the token, the local token with test is then overwritten uh, with that configuration. That's it. That way you can use your own customizable, customizable dependency injection. Uh, have fun with that and I hope this was interesting for you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.